for navigation, we put the tracker on the opposite iliac crest. So uh, that's why we draped it out here. So we make three little small poke holes for the tracker. So you find the iliac crest, and then you go between the two tables. Put it in a pretty good ways, make sure that it's stable. And we put the ortho lock. You put it on such that you can actually tighten the screws. If you put it the other way, then you have to tighten it from over here, and that's, that can be challenging. And we always put a third pin in, because we really like the stability that three pins give us. And these trackers have such a good range that it's not any issue whatsoever of where you put it to get it seen by the camera. So the camera is at the end of the arch, and we can see it quite well. Now, in order for leg length, what we do is we make a little poke hole on the distal femur, and then we use this drill. We only bury the tip, but not the drill. And that gives us a little hard stop to create a little divot. Table up. Okay. Good, back down. And then the left ASIS first. Right ASIS second. And the symphysis pubis. And then the distal marker, we put our gun into the hole. And I can find it real good. I'm in the hole. And that gives me a very accurate distal marker for leg length. Now, what we do just to make sure that we can find that hole again, we kind of go through the process as if we're done with doing a hip. So we, we register a fake socket. and do a post-reduction. And of course, this should give us a reading of zero since we haven't done an operation yet. And sure enough, it gives us zero. So we know that we can find the hole. We know that it's accurate. We know that the X is in the middle um, of the ML and AP dimension. And then we go back and we delete the socket registration since we're going to register again. Uh, after we do our neck osteotomy. So now we're ready to start doing the operation. <coughs>